Hi, everybody. Welcome to INACAL's Teacher Talk webinar today called Tech Tools to Enhance Student Engagement in Blended and Online Learning. We're pleased to have Michelle, Michelle Gill, uh, Vice President of Professional Learning from PLS, PLS Third Learning. Boy, you'd think I could read this slide a little better than that. Anyway, um, you're in for a real treat from Michelle with a lot of the great tools that she has to share with you. So. Um, Michelle, I'll turn it over to you, and um, I'll ask you to start by sending out that document first, and and then I'll let you take it from there. Okay, let's see. Hi, everybody, and I am gonna. I was thinking I could double click this and make it go, but it might not be going. So, just to keep things exciting, let's try this one more time, and I'm gonna get it to you any second. Here we go. Let's try that one. And let me know if it should be coming through. All right, while this is going through, um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Michelle Gill, and um, technology tools is a hobby. Uh, I, as a li for a living, I work with online um, graduate courses, online professional development with PLS Third Learning. So um, I think that got through. So if you got it, go ahead and give me a, a yes or a, any kind of anything in the chat box and I'll know it made it. Okay, great. Somebody got it. I'm going to keep rolling. That said, let's see, I'm just going to go ahead and start clicking slides. So welcome. I'm glad you're here. We are going to zip through a whole bunch of tools. We're going to do it really quickly. And that download you just received is actually on a Google Doc. And I'll make sure you get the link to the Google Doc. The, I think the link is actually at the top of that document you received. And I update that almost daily. Whenever I find an interesting new tool, I toss it in there. So that stays pretty up to date. And there won't be anything on the presentation today that isn't listed on that page. On the other hand, there's lots of things listed on that page that we're not going to talk about today. So my goal is to introduce you to some things you might have seen before, hopefully some tools that you've not seen, and hopefully get you thinking about ways you can incorporate this, not just into an online or even a blended course, but into face-to-face -face classes as well. So here we go. I want to start with the absolute simplest tool that exists. And it's my favorite because it is just so easy. And it's called Vakaroo. So I'm not going to actually demo it. I'm just going to show you every slide of what it takes to record a video. And it's super easy. So you go to vakaroo.com, and this is the home page. It's really simple. You push, click to record. When you get here, you do have to allow the microphone and camera, if you, which it doesn't use the camera. And once you've done that, you're going. You go ahead and start recording. You click the Stop button. And at this point, you can listen, see if you like it, and retry if you don't. Now, here's the magic part. Notice down here where it says Click to Save. Once you've done that, this is the screen that shows up. And this is the part that people miss, and it's the most wonderful part of Vakaroo. You can take the link and share the link. Uh-oh. Can you hear? If, is anybody else having trouble hearing me? I just noticed someone lost audio. Oh, OK, I'm going to keep rolling then. Sorry for whoever's losing it. Um, hang in there. So here we have a quick and easy choice. You can share with a link. You can embed it. You can email it. You can Facebook, tweet, you, know, you name it. It's all here. What most people miss is right down in the small print where you can download it as an MP3 or a WAV file. You can also create a QR code. So think about how easy it is to take any length of a file and toss it to someone. You can save it on your computer, or you can use the link. According to Vakaroo, the links last, they'll, they'll keep them up about 30 days, but there's no guarantees. Once you download it to your computer, it's saved for good. So when you think in terms of sending small audio files, go ahead and type in the chat box, what are some ways you can use a small or even a larger audio file with your students? 
And while you're chatting about that, I'm going to give you one idea as a former English teacher that, that we actually used before the days of the Internet <laughs> when we would actually be providing feedback back on really long essays. And rather than writing the same comments over and over again, we would um, put, we'd give feedback on the audio and just put a one, a two, a three on the paper. And we do that on cassette tapes. So think about how much easier it is to do this on Vakaroo. And it sounds like you all have these great ideas as well. Lots of them in the chat box. So if you're listening to this on recording, don't forget to check out the chat box with things like oral assessments, feed forward, foreign language, ooh, and prep for a science lab. So great, great ideas. Again, super simple tool. Anybody can use it. Um, quick and easy and a lot of fun. If you've used Socrative, go ahead and give a, do we have a thumbs up? Sorry, I've got all these little windows over the top. How about a smiley face or a check? Checks work too. So if you've got a yes or no, if you've used Socrative, go ahead and give me a quick feedback. A couple people have. Others haven't. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time. What I do want to tell you is my rule about tools is if I can figure it out without reading the directions, it's a good tool. And I know that's terrible because there are some really amazingly powerful um, technology, technology tools out there that are incredibly meaningful. But the reality is in my life, I need to be able to grab it and try it. And if it doesn't look easy right at the beginning, I don't use it. Socrative won this, this challenge. So I'm showing you the Socrative homepage. And the way this works, if you're a teacher, you choose to sign up. Once you've done that, you simply go to the teacher login. From that login, this is what you see. So you'll create an account the first time, and after that, you'll log in. And only the teacher has to have a login. Now this looks confusing, but it's not. The most important thing is highlighted on this page, and that's the My Room number. What you do is you take the My Room number and you share it with your students. So whether you're in a chat room or on a shared whiteboard or standing in the front of the classroom, give that number to your students. Your students go into that last page we just saw and click student login. They enter the room, they type in this number, so there's no need for their email or any login of any kind. They type your room number and they're entered. At that point, this is what they see. So they log in onto a room number, they add the room number, and you can create on that previous page quizzes, uh, games, tests, all sorts of little quick uh, formative assessments that you can use with your students. You also don't even have to create it ahead of time. You can simply give them four options, A, B, C, D, and this quick quiz on the right would simply say A, B, C, D. They'll give the answer, you'll get the results, and you didn't have to type anything into the computer. So it's an instant feedback from your students. One other neat uh, part of Socrative is you can actually use these sort of game, gaming responses. So um, how far people are going and what they're up to. This one, Todd, I honestly haven't used this asynchronously. So I'm not sure if this is an awesome asynchronous tool, but I bet if it can be used that way, someone in this group has done it. So I'm going to let them answer that question. Uh, Padlet, I'm guessing this is a more popular tool. It used to be Wallwisher, if you've heard of it. Padlet is another super simple tool that does not involve login from the students. So here what you do, you go to this home page, and the first thing you click is build a wall. Once you've done that, here's what happens next. This is what you get. You get a blank wall you are able to click this big yellow button that says modify it. And again, this is the teacher directions. Once you're here, you give it a title, give it a description, pick a picture if you want, and you've already built your Padlet. At this point, all your students need is the link. And if you'll notice on this previous page, um, there's some, an address button right here. 
in the yellow line, that address button allows you to actually customize the web address. So here I've used the term favorite tool. And I think you can go there. And now I'm having this horrible feeling that it's actually favorite tools with an S. So if you go to favorite tool and it doesn't look like what you're seeing on this screen, <laughs> it's supposed to have an S on the end. So that said, um, a great thing about Vakaroo is you double click anywhere on the screen and you can go ahead and add your own idea. So I'm going to task um, Rob with this as well because he had sent me a great new tool in an email just about a week ago and I said, oh yeah, I'm totally going to put that in the presentation and I didn't. So <laughs> if he wants to add this here, it's a good one it's a, and it's on that blue list uh, that you received at the beginning of the session and we'll send it out again at the end. So again, Padlet, super fun, students don't need a login, and you can include links. As you can see here, these images upload just from a link to the tool. Um, you can upload documents, you can add pictures from your webcam, and a photo from your document. And yes, Joseph, uh, students absolutely add to this wall. Anyone with the link can add to the wall. So this is a great way to do some quick feedback, even with very large groups. Uh, it gets, and the wall can be huge. I've just cut a small portion of, it, portion of it out for this screenshot. When it comes to shared um, bulletin boards and shared mind maps, Coggleit is another. And I'm going to show you like four in a row. I'm going to zoom through them really quick, but I just want to give you a sense of them. And you can go, the one that, that that strikes your fancy is the one that you're going to want to go check out um, because they're all a little bit different. Coggleit is collaborative. It allows you to make really pretty, very text-based mind maps. So again, multiple folks can be on at the same time, adding to the same map. You'll notice the share button in the upper right corner. Um, one of the things I like being completely non-artistic but appreciating prettiness is the fact that the color happens automatically. So as you create child um, groupings, the color works all by itself. For those of you who have actual skill and talent in the world of color and design, you can completely control those colors um, on your own. I just don't do it because I'm unskilled and it gets ugly really quickly. So as you can see, there are some areas where you can add images and image files, but really it's not the focus of Coggleit, but it's a cool tool. Slatebox is a little more clunky in my opinion, but it's got some benefits. Again, it is collaborative, all of these are. Um, it allows multiple people to get in at the same time. It has a little bit more functionality from the keyboard. So it, it has some more typing tools that allow you to create child bubbles and everything else. Um, and the other thing is it has a connection to um, Canvas. So if you're using Canvas, that's another benefit of the slate box mind map and I keep trying to use my arrow buttons to go between. Poplet, I have to admit, is my favorite. So Poplet, again, collaborative and a mind map. What I love about Poplet is that it is super, super easy to use. Um, I can show you in the next 30 seconds and you can go play. So what I'm gonna try to do is load the video so you can see the demo. So let's, I'm gonna see if this works. And if it plays for you, that will be awesome. And if it doesn't play for you, I'm going to ask you to be patient.
All right. So if you can hear me, and I'm not sure I want to stop it if someone's still listening to the end, but I'm thinking you've got to feel. And the link to that actual file so you can see it is in the chat room. So hopefully that will help you get to there. So Poplet, lots of fun, super easy. Collaborative is real simple. And um, in terms of the trick is the iPad. So Poplet is free. You can make up to five Poplets um, on a PC. The, app, the iPad app is free, but if you want to collaborate using an iPad, they make you pay. So everything's free on, the, on a computer, but on a tablet, they make you pay for collaboration. So someone mentioned that that's a lot like Linoit. So here's two, here are two other tools that each have their special niches. Um, Linoit is a huge um, bulletin board. Again, it's very Post-it focused. You can collaborate on boards. And you can upload, as you can see, pictures, Post-its. One thing that makes Linoit different or I think special is the calendar feature. It maintains a calendar and allows you to use it to manage dates, assignments, um, schedules, uh, storyboards, you name it. You can uh, link things and link Post-its to the calendar. So that's the special piece about Linoit. It does a lot of stuff, but that's the one thing that I think is really unique. Real-time board down here at the bottom is uh, the Cadillac version, I think, of the free tools. It's huge. They give you unlimited white space, so you never run out of the top of the table. Um, also, if you're looking, for example, at the screen, each of those teeny tiny um, squares at the bottom are full-size papers. So this, this, huge, this piece gets huge. Um, they have lots of templates for things like specifications, app building, manufacturing. I mean, it's really big and really powerful, but it still works for Post-its. It's just a, a much more robust tool. Murally can do the same thing as what you just saw in um, real-time board. But what I like about Murally is its friendliness with photos. So here's an example of a shared board that a group of us did who did some triathlons together. You'll notice I'm keeping the pictures really small. There are just some things the public doesn't need to see. But um, one of the things we wanted to do was share pictures with each other and not necessarily with the whole world on Facebook. So we created a shared Murally. And it allows you to upload pictures, upload comments. Notice up here in the corner, we actually have uploads to Google Docs, which are our packing lists. We have links to websites, including the hotel, things like this. All of these things fit in. And like Poplet, you can create a pathway. And so this huge overwhelming pile of pictures quickly turns into a slideshow as it moves through the path from picture to picture, allowing you to zoom in and zoom out. Um, sort of like a really simplistic Prezi with pictures. I have been talking nonstop. Um, and please feel free. I'm trying to keep one eyeball on the chat bar. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to pop them in. And I will slow down as much as I can and um, do what I can to answer. My Histro. My Histro is not just for history teachers. It is a timeline uh, mapping history storytelling product that allows you to fill in the blanks and create a pretty robust um, uh, presentation. So let me give you an example. So here's the home page of My Histro. Click the Story button. Oh, and as you can see, it links into Edmodo if you wanted it to. It also works on the web. Once you're there, you get to the page of you. Of you. you can create a new story. And here's where you start. You title the story, and you give a quick one-liner. And then you can co-author. So here's where it gets collaborative. If you choose to work on this story with multiple people, each person's contributions get tagged with their name. And then you can give permissions to get in there. You go ahead and you click the Next button and create an event. So with my Histro, you create various events within stories. Here's an example of the Create a New Event button. So I've added Charlotte Bronte's birth. I've completely hijacked information from um, the internet, tossed it in here, found a photo, which is probably illegal. Don't tell anybody. And I gave a location. So notice I've got a date 
You can even be as specific as the time. Photo, location on a map, and information. Once you click the Done button, and yes, we'll definitely get you the PowerPoint, um, here is what it looks like. Now, you'll notice this is a My Histro with one event, Charlotte's birth. And here you can see the picture. Let me show you a very detailed My Histro. And here's an example of a migration period. Notice there's a plus and minus here on this timeline. You can expand and sort of zoom in and zoom out on the timeline. You'll notice this is the first story or the first event on this project. Notice there's a little next button right there. When you click it, it goes to the next item. When you choose to, to look at more information, this is what you see. The map, social comments if they're approved and allowed, content with a picture and any text that's been entered. And then you can also see if there's a video. When you scroll down, you can actually play the video in real time inside this My Histro event. You can also choose to view all the events in this shortened, abbreviated, chronological order way. And you can click on the individual titles to take you again to those individual stories or events. Okay, I'm going to keep rolling here. Meograph, similar to My Histro in the way that it uses location, date, stories, and text. Um, oh, yay, Alberta Grade 7 Social Studies. Woohoo! you rock, using My Histro, I think, or Meograph. You'll have to let us know which one I think you're talking My Histro. Um, Meograph is the same concept, a little less um, detailed, and but uh, I want to say a little more user friendly. So here's your main page. Once you've logged in, all you do is add a title, and you click the button that says add a moment. When you get here, this is what you fill in. So you've seen the title. I added over on this left side a photo by clicking the photo button, and it allows you to upload it from your computer. Um, you can click the video button to incorporate video. I'll show you the narration in a minute. So I added text. This can be paragraphs of text. It does not have to just be a single line. You'll notice this lovely photo of my mom. I'm sure she's thrilled the world is seeing it. Um, a location, a date. The date can be a day um, or a year or a month and a year. Again, you can also add a link, and that will display down at the bottom. You can also add narration that will run when this slide is being shown. So here, notice when you click the narration button, you can click it over here, or you can actually just click the narration tab. This button pops up. You click the red dot, and it gives you a three to four second countdown. Once it's ready and you've allowed your microphone access, you talk over and narrate whatever you want to say about the screen. It records it and holds it with this moment in the story. Uh-oh. Let's see, I'm gonna, there we go. Um, if you want to upload a video, you can pull those, it allows you to search those videos from YouTube. And once you've loaded a video, it actually lets you to allows you to drag and drop and edit that video so you can choose the exact clip of the video you want to incorporate. This is what the final story looks like. So you, I don't have a whole lot of events, but you'd see each of the events listed on the timeline on the bottom, the locations following through on the left, and your images, videos, or anything else on the right. And you can actually see these. The one thing about Meograph that I think is a drawback is that you can't download the story. Um, I think you can if you have a paid membership. So the only way you can see a Meograph is to go to the, per to the link to that Meograph. So there's a link in the um, chat room, which you can check out later if you want to see what this looks like in real time. It's real quick and real short. Um, there's probably a lot of better demos on the website, but at least it'll give you a look and feel for what happens. So you can share your video, and you can embed it. You just can't download it. Phew. Um, I don't know if your ears are all ringing because I'm talking so fast, but I want to give you a chance to see everything. Um, we video. 
Now, again, I think I told you earlier that my rule is if the directions are too hard or I have to review the directions, that this is, um, that if the directions are too hard, I don't want to do it. Now, if you look at the screen, if you're like me, you immediately just said, it's too hard, I don't want to do it. So I want to encourage you to try WeVideo because this is not the screen that you start with. It's very simple to use and it allows you to, in minutes, put together what I consider a really professional video. The thing about WeVideo is you can do it with your friends. So it's not just me gathering everybody's stuff and putting it together. It's a group of my students in various locations uploading their images, video clips, documents, content, narration. They all can upload it together. And then you can you can then take those pieces and as a group together in real time, you can move where those pieces fit. So for example, you can see down here, this is a graphic that we overlaid that we just picked. These are my video clips. Some of these are pictures. Some of these are effects. And here's a sound piece that I downloaded. You can move them around just by dragging and dropping. Now to give you a sense of this, I'm going to do another video demo and see if this works. Now I have to warn you, this video took me 10 minutes to create. And of that 10 minutes, about six of them were used trying to find the videos. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and show it. And yes, you should be able to download the video as well from that screen. So let's see if this works. And some of you, if you've just logged in or you've got a slow connection, it may take a moment. Now, I know some of you might still be watching it. I'm going to just stop it where we're at. You can check it out later. I know you all really want to see that again. It's such quality stuff. <laughs> but what I wanted to show you, other than the really what happens when you use too many effects in one video, is how simple that is to do. All those effects were from the Wii Video product on its own. So I didn't, all I uploaded were images and video. Everything else was part of Wii Video. Um, and yes, it is connected with Google Suite and there is some stuff, it's always, one of the, the positives about this is um, that it, these tools are, all have levels of free membership. The negatives of all of these is that notoriously the most popular and most powerful tools eventually migrate into um, pay systems. And some of them I think are worth it. So, the good news is when you learn how to use it for free, you have a really good feel of whether it's worth your money or not later if it ends up becoming a charge tool. And Viclone. Okay, my most exciting discovery recently. So I'm going to ask this question just to see if we know. Have you used Viclone? Have you heard of it? Give me a check mark for a yes or a nothing. Ooh, some people have seen it. Yay. All right. Here's what makes Viclone a whole lot of fun. And I, what it does is it allows multiple people, <laughs> agreed Dave, it's all about the dancing, and I've got one of those videos for you. Um, it allows multiple people to download the Viclone app. Once you've downloaded the Viclone app, you use it to videotape something at the same time as other people with the Viclone app are videotaping. So. Let me give you an example. Here is a science experiment in a classroom. You have multiple students videotaping the same scene with their, um, with their tablets, mobile devices, and phones. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the movie. But while you're watching it, here's the trick, and here's what makes Viclone special. Viclone recognizes by GPS where you are, recognizes that there are multiple of you in the same location and that you're uploading video. 
It then takes that video you've uploaded, combines it, automatically edits it together, and keeps the sound steady through the entire process. So as you watch this movie, think, try to, instead of watching the science experiment, watch what's happening with the changing in camera angles. And you can see the students all holding their phones. But notice the changes in camera cuts. So what you're seeing is different camera, each of those people who are holding a phone is one of these camera angles. So I'll show you another example, and that is we actually, well, let me show you the next page first. Let me see if I can do this properly. And this might help you see what I'm talking about. So once everyone has uploaded their individual videos to the website, you can go into viclone.com, and yes, shots is what we're talking about. Sorry, I'm probably not using good video terminology. You go into viclone.com, and this is what you see. So <coughs> at the um, INACAL conference, at a pre-conference we had at this last session, um, we took a small dance break in order to demonstrate viclone. And what we did is I asked for seven volunteers. And those were the people who didn't have to dance, and they got to stand around holding their phones, and everybody else got stuck in the middle. Notice each of these colored squares on the right-hand side of the screen is a different person's camera. Down at the bottom is when we want to cut or go to that person's camera. And you, by click, so what happens is you, you hit play, which is here in the middle. The video starts going based on the way they decided to edit it, by the way the computer put the shots together. As you're watching it, if you say, oh, wait, I want it to go to this shot, you click on this button, and it instantly turns to that camera. And then if you want to change it, you can change it there, or you can even change it by dragging and sliding and deleting these, these handles down here at the bottom. So when you think about what it used to take to edit a video with multiple cameras, and turn it into a usable video with continuous sound, what you're seeing here is doing it all with multiple apps instantly on the web. It is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to try to show you just the beginning of the Viclone movie we created at the iNACAL conference. And let's see, here it goes. You can tell we were really excited. People really liked feet at this one. So you can see it's changing cameras. And I'm going to go ahead and stop just so you can get a feel. Again, if it was really something important, you can go ahead and put things together and, <laughs> and edit them very carefully. Um, Absolutely. How cool is that, uh, Tom, mentioning wearing Google Glasses and using that to record the Viclone. Awesome. Yeah, teacher dances, we won't discuss that. And, and the hysterical thing is I keep thinking, so let's not show anybody who paid for this session that we were dancing. It's going to be like an IRS scandal. So, all right, moving on <laughs> from Viclone. Um, the one critical thing about Viclone is the permissions. So if you're talking, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm just going to interrupt it. Dave, good question. Um, you can see it on their website, and I believe you can upload to YouTube. Um, and I have to be careful because I'm not sure I'm saying that's accurate. Um, one of the things about Viclone is that it is default public. So unless you click the button to make your video private, what you put on there is uploaded to the Viclone website. 
for everybody to see. Um, they have one of the most amusing terms and conditions that you have to sign in order to get further. And it actually is one of the few terms and conditions I've ever read. Did I just admit that on the internet? Um, and it actually starts with, don't take Viclone to Vegas, and then it moves on. <laughs> so. Um, it's amusing. It's definitely not something you're probably going to want to use with your, your elementary school students, but it definitely has some possibilities uh, for video editing that are a lot of fun. All right, we're rolling. Here is another tool that I don't think a lot of people know about, and I, I found it accidentally looking for something else, and it's amazing and I love it. So, video notes. Here's the thing. Notice it's video, not .es. That's the part that got me really confused at the beginning. What this tool allows you to do is take any YouTube video or any Khan Academy or Coursera or MIT, any of those videos that are stored in that format, enter the video URL in this spot, and then it allows you to watch the video on this screen and take notes in the right-hand side. Now, here's where things get interesting. Anytime I take a note, so I typed notes as I was watching this long video about something about physics or math or something exciting. Anytime I typed a note, it automatically added the timestamp in the video of where that note was taken. Now, here's where it gets good. Let's say this is a three-hour video. We'd never do that to our students. Let's say this is a three-minute video. And I come back later to find this, and I want to review, wait or inertia, wait a minute, what was that? If I click 1.02, if I click this button, I would go ahead and, and it actually takes me to that point in the video right here on the screen. The other cool thing about this is I can click anywhere on the screen, it'll take me to that point in the, in the notes on the side. Even better is the fact that you can save all this through Google Docs. So when you save into Google Drive and you click this, share, this Save button, you save it in Google Drive and you can then share it just like you would a Google Doc. So you can update permissions so that you could have multiple people access these notes, multiple people contribute to the same notes, or you could even use it to guide your students. Let's say there's an MIT video that's just, you know, it's two and a half hours long, and you want them to check five key sections of that video. You go ahead and add the initial notes on those five key sections. They hit the note, they read it, it takes them right to that portion. Or maybe you have them ask questions. Whatever you do with this, there's so many ways to connect. So let me show you what that looks like. Once you hit that Save button, it takes you to your Google Drive, and you have to, the one critical thing is you have to remember to title it. Once you've titled it, it shows up in your Google Drive. You can click it and go ahead and give permissions. But before you view it, it'll say no preview, and this is the important piece. You have to open it with the video notes app or with the video notes um, program. So you can't open it with the Google Drive viewer. It doesn't work. So again, lots of options, lots of ways you can use it collaboratively, and lots of ways I've found myself using it whenever I'm watching a video that's more than about a minute and a half long because my attention span is just that pathetic. And it lets me go back, if I'm taking a course that has a lot of video involved, it allows me to track everything I've watched and the critical portions so that when I go to review, I, will, I can tell you, I'm never going to watch a whole video again. I don't care if it's three and a half minutes long, <laughs> it's too long. But having some notes so it makes it much more likely I'll go back and check it out. Okay, this, I didn't download this video, but I'm just going to tell you about it. Um, Video.co is a free animation site where you can create short animated videos. There's some cool, neat stuff in here. Allison just added the link to a, a basically a video.co created ad for another app that we're going to talk about next. Um, video reminds me a lot of Powtoon, uh, but it's free. So there's a lot to look at, and video.co is worth checking out. And I'm going to keep zipping here because we're almost to the end. Um, Wago app 
This is the ad that's advertised in the Ryan Can't Read Chinese uh, demo on Widio. And this is an augmented reality app. There's a lot of these out there suddenly. Um, essentially, you take, you turn on Wago, put it over your menu, and it translate Chin translates Chinese into English. It's pretty amazing, magically right before your eyes. So that's just a fun, interesting sort of next-gen tool I wanted to make sure you got. And I'm going to, we are actually finishing, uh, is it possible? on time, early, um, <laughs> oh, I totally agree. This is not, I don't think this is educational at all, but I just think it's totally cool and I wanted to share. This is the Pulpomizer. Um, if you go to this website, you can customize and create your own um, pulp fiction cover. So you can edit all of the words, the title, the, the article, the picture, you can choose all the different pictures, the colors, everything. And the great thing about the Pulpomizer is they allow you to download the image file for free and you can do what you want with it. So really fun way to add um, some interest and some excitement to things. Christina, we are absolutely sending out the recording of this session. Um, I think uh, Rob mentioned it might take a day or two for it to get all processed and sent out and then it'll be ready to go. So, phew, I am uh, Dave, and I was just going to say I'm going to take some questions. If you have any at all that you'd like to ask, throw them in the chat. I feel bad that I can't hear all your voices, but there's quite a crowd in here, so I know it's going to, it would pretty quickly overwhelm the system. Um, in terms of closed caption, I am not an expert, Dave. I've heard a lot of people talking about different tools. Um, and that what I've generally heard is for, you get what you pay for and that a lot of the free tools are kind of sad, um, but they're fast. So, and maybe some folks in here would be willing to share some of their ideas if any of them have used closed captioning for video. Also, if you've got some tools that you love that we didn't talk about, I know there's millions out there. Um, if you'd like to share them, that would be awesome. And Brienne, and I apologize if I just massacred your name, um, Tools for Teaching Math Visually. Yes, um, on that website, uh, let me try that again. Here, I can do this. I'm going to share the Tech Tools link again and see if we can get it to sent to you. Let's see. Oh, oh, there we go. Thank you, Allison. Um, the linky.com tech tools doc, if you take that link, that goes, takes you to the Google doc. Um, when you're there, there's a link at the top of that page to another Google doc, just to keep this exciting. The second Google doc is all about open source, uh, open education resources. So this first one we sent you to is all about tech tools. The open ed resource doc actually has things organized by subject matter and there are a number of visual math tools that allow kids to essentially do um, electronic manipulatives, shared whiteboards where they can do math problems and things like that. Uh-oh, the linky link is not working. That's not good. I'm going to go to, oh, that's a problem. Hang on one second. Let me see what I can do. Dear me. Oh, it's Tech Tools Doc. Sorry, add D-O-C at the end of that, that link. L-I-N, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. Let's see. I'm going to hope and pray that this one works. It's coming. Yay. OK. That one works. And the link to the other site with open ed resources is, bear with me, I'm going to make sure I get it right here, linky.com, O-E-R, and I'm going to hope this one works. There you go. Okay, so both of those two links that we, I just popped in should work for you. 
anything else. Look, I see lots of anonymous coyotes and camels showing up in Google Docs. Hooray! Are there any other questions that I can pretend I know the answer to or I can tell you I don't know and source all these amazing people who are in here? Anything else we can do? I can't believe I ended on time. I think that's the first time in my entire life I've finished before the deadline without going over. So that said, um, Allison, am I supposed to hand this off to you? And I should probably like give you permissions. Oh no, you're in here and you're a moderator. I'm going to stop talking. Thank you so much for coming tonight. And Allison, if you want to jump in, I'm going to turn off my talk and I think he's got it set so multiple people can chat. Nope, I don't have anything else to add. Just thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you sharing all these awesome tools. I hope everyone has a great time and learned lots of new information. So thank you everyone and have a great night. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Um, I've uploaded my email. If you need anything, I know they'll be posting the recording of the, the program and we'll be good to go. Have a great one. Thank you for all of your attention. And hey, hope to see you in Palm Springs at the next at the next INACL conference. Have a good one. Bye-bye.